Old Yeller by Fred Gibson. Essential question. How can dangerous situation bring people closer together? It is the late 1860s. Travis lives with his family on the Texas frontier. When Papa leaves home to drive their cattle to market in Kansas, Travis must take over Papa's responsibilities. All goes well until a stray yellow dog shows up. Travis's younger brother, little Arliss, loves the dog, but Travis thinks the mangy animal is nothing but the meat-stealing rascal. Then one day something happens that changes Travis's feeling about the dog forever. Swing that shopping axe was sure hard work. The sweat poured off me, my back muscles ached. The axe got so heavy I could hardly swing it. My breath got harder and harder to breathe. An hour before sundown I was worn down to a nub. It seemed like I couldn't hit another leg. Papa could have lasted till past sundown, but I didn't see how I could. I shouldered my axe and started toward the cabin, trying to think up some excuse to tell Mama to keep her from knowing I was played clear out. That's when I heard little Arlene scream. Well, little Arliss was a screamer by nature. He would scream when he was happy and scream when he was mad. And a lot of times he would scream just to hear himself make a noise. Generally, we paid no more mind to his screaming than we did to the gobble of a wild turkey. But this time it was different. The second I heard his screaming, I felt my heart flop clear over. This time I knew little Arlene was in real trouble. I turned out of the trail leading towards the cabin. A minute before I'd been so tired out with my rail splitting that I couldn't have struck a trot. But now I raced through the tall trees in that creek bottom, covering ground like a scared wolf. Little Arlen's second scream, when it came, was louder and shriller and more frantic sounding than the first. Mixed with it was a whippering crying sound that I knew didn't come from him. It was a sound I'd heard before and seemed like I ought to know what it was. But right then I couldn't place it. Then from way off to one side came a sound that I would have recognized anywhere. It was the coughing roar of a charging bear. I'd just heard it once in my life. There was a time Mama had shot and wounded a hog-killing bear and Papa had had to finish it off with a knife to keep it from getting her. Analyze the text. Dialect. Why does the author include less formal language? Like I felt my heart flop clear over, I tore out up the trail and finish it off. What does the character's dialect add to the story? My heart went to pushing up into my throat, nearly choking off my wind. I strained for every lick of speed I could get out of my running legs. I didn't know what sort of fix little Arlen's had got himself into, but I knew that it had to do with a mad bear, which was enough. The way the late sun slanted through the trees had the trail all across burned with streaks of light, bright light and dark shade. I ran through these bright and dark patches so fast that the changing light nearly blinded me. Then suddenly I raced out into the open where I could see ahead. And what I saw sent a 
to clear through to the marrow of my bones. There was a little Erlins down in that spring hole again. He was lying half in and half out of the water, holding on to the hind leg of a little black bear cub, no longer than a small coon. The bear cub was out of the bank, whimpering and crying and clawing the rocks with all three of his other feet, trying to pull away. But little Erlins was holding on for all he was worth, scared now and screaming his head off, too scared to let go. How the bear cub ever came to prom close enough for little Erlins to grab him, I don't know. And why he didn't turn on him and bite loose, I couldn't figure out either. Unless he was like little Arlene's, too scared to think. But all of that didn't matter now. What mattered was the bear cub's mama. She heard the cries of her baby and was coming to save him. She was coming so fast that she had the brush popping and breaking as she crashed through and over it. I could see her black heavy figure piling off down the slant on the far side of Birdsong Creek. She was hurrying mad and ready to kill. And worst of all, I could see that I would never get there in time. Mama couldn't either. She'd heard Arlene's too, and here she came from the cabin, running down this land toward the spring, scream at Arlins, telling him to turn the bear cub loose, but little Arlins wouldn't do it. All he do was hang with that hand leg and let out one shrill shriek after another as fast as he could suck in a breath. Now the she bear was charging across the shallows in the creek. She was knocking shit of water high in the bright sun, charging with her fur up and her long teeth bared, filling the canyon with that awful coughing roar. And no matter how fast Mama ran or how fast I ran, the she bear was going to get there first. I think I nearly went blind then, picturing what was going to happen to little Arliss. I know that I opened my mouth to scream and not any sound came out. Then, just as the bear went lunging up the creek bank toward little Arliss and her cub, a flash of yellow came striking out of the brush. It was that big yellow dog. He was rolling like a mad bull. He wasn't one third as big and heavy as the she bear. But when he piled into her from one side, he rolled her clear off her feet. They went down in a wild rolling tangle of twisting bodies and scrambling feet and slashing fangs. As I raced past them, I saw the bear launch up to stand on her hind feet like a man while she clawed at the body of the yellow dog hanging to her throat. I didn't want to see more. Without ever checking my stride, I ran in and jerked little Arliss loose from the cub. I grabbed him by the wrist and yanked him up out of that water and slung him toward Mama like he was a half-empty sack of corn. I screamed at Mama, grab him, Mama, grab him and run. Then I swung my chopping axe high and will aim to cave in the she bear's head with the first lick. But I never did strike. I didn't need to. Only Eller hadn't let the bear get close enough. He couldn't handle her. She was too big and strong for that. She'd stand there on her hand feet, hunched over, 
and take a roaring swing at him with one of those big front claws. She'd slap him head over heels. She'd knock him so far that it didn't look like he could possibly get back there before she charged again. But he always did. He did hit the ground rolling, yelling his head off with the pain of the blow, but somehow he'd always roll to his feet. And here he'd come again, ready to tie into her for another round. I stood there with my axe raised, watching them for a long moment. Then from up toward the house, I heard Mama calling. Come away from there, Travis. Hurry, son. Run. That spoke me up to them. I'd been ready to tie into that bear myself. Now, suddenly, I was scared out of my wits again. I ran toward the cabin. But like it was, old Yeller nearly beat me there. I didn't see it, of course, but Mama said that the minute Old Yeller saw we were all in the clear and out of danger, he threw the fight to that she bear and lit out for the house. The bear chased him for a little piece, but at the rate Old Yeller was leaving her behind. Mama said it looked like the bear was backing up. But if the big yellow dog was scared or hurt in any way when he came dashing into the house, he didn't show it. He sure didn't show in it like we all did. Little Arlene's head hushed his screaming, but he was trembling all over and clinging to Mama like he'd never let her go. And Mama was sitting in the middle of the floor, holding him up close and crying like she'd never stop. And me, I was close to crying myself. Old Yeller, though, all he did was come bounding in to jump on us and lick us in the face and bark so loud that there inside the cabin, the noise nearly made us deaf. The way he acted, you might have thought that the bear fight hadn't been anything more than a rowdy romp that we'd all taken part in for the fun of it. Analyze the text. Understanding characters. How does Travis respond to the bear attacking Arliss? What does his response say about his feeling toward his brother? Two little Arlens got us mixed up in the bear fight. I guess I'd been looking on him about like most boys look on their little brothers. I liked him alright, but I didn't have a lot of use for him. What with his always playing in our drinking water and getting in the way of my chopping axe, and holding his head off and chunking me with rocks when he got mad, it didn't seem to me like he was hardly worth the bother of putting up with. But that day when I saw him in the spring so helpless against the angry she bear, I learned different. I knew them that I loved him as much as I did Mama and Papa, maybe in some ways even a little bit more. So it was only natural for me to come to love the dog that saved him. After that, I couldn't do enough for old Yeller.